Okay, Sunday night. This is going to be kind of a long one. So everybody sit down, grab a beer. Um, we're going to go through a couple things. I told you guys earlier, uh, we're going to do a legal notice and demand, copyright infringement notice. Um, and because I operate in private, uh, I'm not going to show you guys my legal notice and demand. Uh, I had to pay a chunk of money for that. And I've already told you it'll be in the description, securedservicesco.com, securedservicescompany.com. They're the ones that helped me with all my secured party and my UCC filing and my legal notice and demand and my copyright and my UCC3 addendum and my collateral and my notifications to the Secretary of State. Uh, the Secretary of Treasury, my Form 56, my Form W-8-B-E-N. Uh, there's just so much stuff. So anyway, this is something else that I've started to do, man, as I've, I'm taking pictures. Okay, you can see this is the original. This is the cover letter I just showed you. Here's the copy. It's going out to them. I get signatures required. This big number here. Okay, 081016 is on all these documents. I also have a certificate of mailing for everything. And here's the legal notice and demand that they're going to get. There's a copyright infringement stapled to the back of it. So this is something else I would suggest that you do. Keep good records. And this is what the cover letter says. We're way past their in default. Okay, it's from me to them. This is what it is. Okay. You're on notice. You failed to respond. Your opportunity to cure has expired. You failed to validate. Okay. Creating an irrevocable estoppel. Okay. Which means you are no longer, uh, you no longer uh, are uh, legally and lawfully allowed to try to collect because you didn't respond. Okay. That's how it works in commerce. Uh, and then I showed you in other videos, the discovery without leave, the one with the answers, no civil dispute, validation letters, uh, validation of, uh, debt letters. I just said that, um, that's what you get when you look at the clock because I'm waiting for game of Thrones. Um, yeah, so they didn't respond to anything. Okay. So you're in copyright breach. You're administering property. That's not yours because all that stuff is mine now because I put a commercial lien on all of my stuff. Okay. So this is just the cover letter. Okay. And that is going out. Here it is. Okay. This is going out May 20th. Okay. So we're going to do this. And it's got the legal notice and demand. It's got the copyright in there. Okay, you can see it just barely right there. Um, so the other thing that I've been working on, this one is kind of cool. So because we are in commerce and because they're operating in the public and it's my belief, um, okay, before I go any further, this is my opinion. I'm not a law firm. This isn't legal advice. Okay, this is just my opinion. This is something I'm doing. If you want to do it, great. If you don't, you know, if you want to copy a little bit of it or do whatever, write it down. You want maybe a copy of it so you can look at it and, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, this isn't legal. This is, if you look at the bottom of the YouTube channel, this is for education only. Okay. All right. So now we got that out of the way. So this is a going to be a commercial Affidavit, affidavit of notice, declaration and demand, fair notice and warning of commercial grace, okay, because their grace period is ending. Uh, I sent them all that paperwork and they ignored me. This is a notice of non judicial proceeding, and this is a U.S., this is the Security and Exchanges Commission tracer flag, okay, not a point of law, okay. What you're trying to do is be in commercial and be in private. Now, that tracer flag is right here. You see that? Okay, this is a non-War Powers Act flag. Okay, so you're coming at them with... Sorry, I had a brain fart. You're coming at them with clean hands. Okay, 
So this is something that's kind of cool. All right, so let's go through this as quick as we can here. So you're going to put your name and address up here. You're going to put to the parties, okay, whatever, address, phone, zip code. This is an action and in, in, this action is taken in accordance with the Uniform Commercial Code and contract law, okay? I'll let you read this. Okay, then you put your name and you put whatever you are, you know, I'm, you know, a sovereign citizen, glow in the dark patriot, trustee of a trustee, whatever. Okay, I'm competent to state to the matters set forth herein. I have personal knowledge. All the facts stated here are true and correct, right? We've all done through that. Veracity, that means accuracy. That the eternal exchanged principles of commercial law are, and these are cool, a workman is worthy of his hire. All are equal under the law. Well, do you feel like they're treating you equally when they give her your house and your car and your, you know, your 401, right? And then they take 60% of your money? In commerce, truth is sovereign. Truth is expressed in the form of an affidavit. An unrebutted affidavit stands in truth in commerce. An unrebutted affidavit becomes the judgment in commerce. Huh, I didn't know that. All matters must be expressed to be resolved. So we've been through that before too. If you don't bring it up, they're just going to act like it doesn't exist. Okay, they're going to presume and assume and make an ass out of you. He who leaves the battlefield first loses by default. You know, these are like maxims of law. You don't steal. You don't bear fault witness. Sacrifice is the measure of credibility. No willingness to sacrifice, no liability. A lien or a claim can be satisfied only through an affidavit by point for point rebuttal. Okay? Do they ever do that? Hell no. That non commercial processes, including this affidavit and the required responses to it, are non-judicial and prejudicial because no judge, court, government, or any agencies thereof or any other third parties whatsoever can abrogate anyone's affidavit of truth. So I'm, I'm thinking these affidavits of non-response, affidavits of default, affidavits of truth, uh, you know, in commerce, they're all, everything that I've read, you know, they all stand as judgment, you know. Only a party affected by an affidavit can speak and an act for himself and is solely responsible for responding with his own affidavit of truth, which no one else can do for him. Okay? So in other words, these people are third-party interveners. They don't have any business in your business. Your house is private. Your children are private. Your job is private. And they've come out of the public and gone into the private to get you. And you know, that doesn't seem fair. So, only a party affected by an affidavit can speak and act for himself. That the lawful seizure, collection, and transfer of ownership of money or property must be affected by a valid commercial lien. Okay? Um, have any of you checked with the county recorder's office to see if they've got a valid commercial lien on you. So we'll just stop this right here. You can kind of read if you want about a lien must contain a ledger, bookkeeping must contain a statement of fact. It must contain a clear statement to where the lien is filed. Okay. Now let's go to number seven. I am not the creation or chattel property of any person or government agency whatsoever. I am not under any obligation whatsoever to any governmental agency, state or federal, or any of the self-passed laws, codes, statutes, regulations, or policies of you, you people in child support that any of all of the various papers, documents, adhesion contracts, or agreements I may have signed with any government agency Right, are hereby null and void. Man, I'm already at 10 minutes. That is the sincerest belief, religious, and spiritual conviction of this affiant, affiant that slavery and peonage 
are immoral, are violations of the first precept of commercial law, that a workman is worthy of his hire, that fraud, misrepresentation, non-disclosure, intimidation, deceit, concealment, lying, and treachery are all wrong. That I have absolutely no desire whatsoever to be your client of, or a slave of any governmental agency, state, federal, of all their principles, United States, or to incur any debts or obligations to said entities for whatever benefits said entities might propose to provide or seek to provide to this affiant, affiant or be directed by, subject to, or accountable to any parties other than my own conscience and best judgment for the purposes of preserving inviolate my inalienable rights, unalienable, inalienable, inalienable there's, they're different too, you should probably look those up, rights to life, liberty, uh, life, liberty, freedom, and property while engaging in the honorable, productive, and non-harmful activities of my life. I'm going to stop this here for you. You can just put your name in here. No commercial paperwork exists. They have not been furnished or supplied to me and uh, or any others that create a so-called liability. So I'm not liable to you child support fuckbags, okay? So then you just put in, you know, number 13, you put in, uh, you know, I sent you a notice on this. You didn't respond. Uh, you fucking dicks, you take my property, you fat bitches, mad at the fucking world because no one will fuck you, your land whale, crooked teeth having, no job, government because no one likes you, cat lovers, Prius driving, Facebook status checking, blah, blah, whatever you want to put in there, okay? <sighs> okay, let's take a breath here. That I, the underside herein, demand all the parties involved in any way whatsoever, so-called cause of action, who attempt or continue to proceed against me or my property in the instant cause of action in any way furnished answers to the following. Where is the true, real and true commercial paperwork bearing that made me liable? Where is it, man? Where is the freaking contract, right? We keep talking about that. Where are the real, true, proper and lawful assessments? Okay, that means I want to see your books. Where is the itemized statement, ledger, and accounting for services? Okay. Uh, if there's no services, there's no public assistance, there's no welfare, there's no SNAP, housing, food stamps, any of that shit, you're not liable. What or who are the parties engaged in fair business practices? Where is the full disclosure? Where is the clean hands? Where is the good faith action? Where are the truth, mercy, grace, and all similar just and virtuous qualities and proceedings based on them that are supposed to be inherent in commerce and the uniform commercial code? Everything is based on contract. That all parties who act against this affiant are on affiant, affiant, are their alleged basis must produce the commercial affidavits of truth sworn by the claimants to be true, correct, and complete, okay? So where's your affidavit, man? Hey, magistrate, uh, no, excuse me, excuse me, objection. There's no affidavits. Who, who, who's got a claim here against me? Excuse me, your honor, uh, objection. Do you have a claim against me? Uh, objection. Uh, who in this room has a claim against me? Okay, can I see your affidavit, please? Okay. All right, just read this. We're at 14 minutes already. Okay. Read this shit. It's good stuff. All parties who proceed to act or assist in set actions against this affiant, uh, uh, affiant, put your name in there, without thorough, verifiable, point-by-point -point rebuttal of each and every point set forth in this affidavit, shall be immediately charged with criminal fraud, theft, conspiracy of extortion, and, okay, and then here's all the numbers, all the costs and fees that are in my copyright infringement. Here's my file number, legal notice and demand, that failure to respond as herein required within the herein prescribed time of 30 days will be deemed by this affiant, affiant to invoke the doctrine of acquiescence. That failure to respond 
invoke the doctrine of acquiescence. Sorry, I had to cough. Um, and admission to recover in commerce the loss or damage party, uh, properties plus damages, penalties, and costs. That in light of the foregoing declarations, all alleged contracts and agreements between this affiant. Okay, well, shit. You want to put your name in there. Let's that turn like that. And its principles or the United States are unconscionable and baseless. I herein, hereby, and herewith, herewith revoke, disavow, and renounce my signature on all of your bullshit pieces of paperwork. Okay. And what's the report of furnace any contractual agreement or nexus between myself and ORS, state of Utah, United States. Okay. And it keeps going. And it keeps going. And all your shit is bullshit and get out of my life that the respondents attacks on the commercial and private liability of the undersigned affiant and the affiant, uh, and this affidavit or response rebuttal to such claims and charges created the mutually voluntarily consensual commercial private contract by and between the underside and the respondents failure to respond of the respondents to prove their claims okay or in the Olson case, cease all collection enforcement actions against the undersigned shall constitute deliberate criminal actions and willful breach of and default on a bilateral contract. Okay? So this is a contract with them. Okay? If they don't respond, they're in default. Formed knowingly, intentionally, and voluntarily. I say all this is true and correct. And you'd put the date. You'd sign it in honor. Okay, my hand, date of February, May, December, whatever, 2019. And then I forgot to put this too. This is where your jurat or your notary stamp would go. Okay, you put the state and county down there, have the dude sign, maybe put his little notary stamp down there or whatever. Okay, but this is what we're looking at, man. Okay, uh, next week we'll go into where you want to file this stuff and the rest of it. Peace.